Hi, this is Kristen Mosian at the Small Business Development Center at Portland Community College. Earlier today, I met up with Victoria and Antonio of Lara Media Services. They recently graduated from the 2014 Advanced Small Business Management Program sponsored by the Portland Business Alliance with support from Bank of America. Lara Media Services is a Hispanic marketing agency serving the Pacific Northwest, specializing in advertising, market research, and public relations. Some of their clients include Portland General Electric, Cadoba Grill of Oregon, and Kaiser Permanente. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. Uh, let's get started in the interview. What inspired you to start Lara Media Services? Um, there was two things, but I always say there was a pineapple because I was working for a, another company, another marketing agency that targets to the Latinos. Uh, Roy, a lot of people know the owner, Roy Larson. And one day I was in my desk and he came very fast and say, Victoria, is pineapple uh, big for Latinos? And I say, yes. And then I follow him and he was talking with the main mayor for, I'm sorry, main buyer from Subway. And he told him, yes, go ahead and buy all these pineapples. And when he hung up, I said, how much he's going to buy? And it was thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. I mean, and I was like, oh, my God, and you just told him to do that just because I asked give you this question. And I was kind of worried because I was, oh, my God, what, what about we don't eat pineapples? And Subway is buying all this based on my answer. Uh, that night, I thought, you know, I can do this better because I – know what we like, I know what we need, we have, I have the same challenge. And this uh, person, he's very smart and everything, but he doesn't know, he doesn't have a clue what Latinos want like, or how we are, and he doesn't, he cannot communicate with them. And I decided to open uh, Lara Media. And of course it was because I see the need, and also I saw the potential of being a resource between companies and the community, um, being like a connector. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when when did you open your doors for, for business? It was just myself, uh, okay. one person. It was uh, 14, 1999. Okay. So did it, was there uh, kind of a longer period when you had this idea to start and then when you actually started getting clients or? Mm -hmm. did, it was, I had this idea, I gave him my two weeks notice, and then I started just knocking doors, and wow. I got clients in a couple of weeks and days. Wow, wow. <laughs> uh, that That's amazing. So my next question, but I also want to go into how you've expanded your team, and you and you got your um, your family on board here, but so, so you alluded to specifically marketing to Latinos is obviously this huge need and this huge niche. How has that helped your business? Definitely it has helped because uh, there is a lot of marketing firms and we have the niche of focusing all our efforts and messaging on Latinos, mm -hmm. being Latinos ourselves. And where the idea when we started Lara Media 14 years ago then I went by myself a couple of years, and then I we, I started growing. And of course, the first people <laughs> I asked to help me and to join me in the venture was my two brothers, Pablo and Antonio, and they are have been with me since since then. And um, having a specific market helps you to to put all your not to put all your eggs in one. I don't. Say, but to put all your efforts and your vision and, and to have really have some um, a way to measure uh, the results of the campaign when you have a specific group that you want to target. And Latinos is a very good group because it's not just the, the, the group that's growing faster than any other group, but also we are very loyal clients. Um, we tend to have relationships with the brands we like. We also are, have a very good network because in households, and the census say the household, Latinos per household is 4.4 against 2.1 for the rest of the, the other market. That means if you reach one person, you're going to reach almost five people wow. instead of only two. And we also, we are very social. We see ourselves as a part of a group. 
Here people see, and this culture and is fine, and see themselves as an individual. We, we see our, the value of ourselves being a part of a group. That means uh, families are very important. Mm -hmm. And also communicating um, anything we like or don't like to everybody. And that makes a very profitable market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So, Antonio, what is it like working with your siblings? Um, for me, it's easy. I think of my, um, of course, I love my siblings. Um, I think of my siblings as a different version of myself or vice versa. I think I'm a different version of themselves. So I think that um, that helps a lot to uh, to go after the same the same goals and, and communicate better. And we were raised in a, in, in a nice household where we, we were uh, taught to cooperate with each other. Mm -hmm. So that helps a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to add? Yes, I will say that, yeah, when we were, we, we were growing up, we were not, we, we didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, my parents were very united. We were very happy, but we didn't have stuff. stuff. Uh, we didn't have TV when we were growing up, um, but we did everything together. We sing together. We get in trouble together. <laughs> we we do when we were like very little, like probably like between seven or eight. We used to um, charge our neighbor kids to see us act <laughs> and make popcorn. And lemonade, and they pay us to go and see us. They find us doing this stuff. I mean, we were like, I, I guess we were kind of entrepreneur because we knew if we did something together, we can have money and then buy something for my mom or buy a sofa. But since we were very little, we started doing this, going to these ventures together. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, I will say sometimes it's difficult because we are so close. Like my sister-in-law hates when we go to the party, we start talking about business, and she said, like, hey, don't talk about this. Because we are all there and talk about clients. And I know, I mean, it's, it's difficult, but also um, it's very rewarding. Um, it's a way, you always have the support, no matter what. And of course, we, we fight each other, we are not, have the same opinions, but also uh, give us, at least uh, me, give me another perspective to see things. Do you have any advice to businesses who um, are, are a family business or they're thinking about going to business with their family? Do you have any advice for those? I think they need to. They need to realize if they want to do that, they need to, to uh, realize that the, the goal is going to be shifted to not just the individual um, the individual becoming successful, but the, but the group, the family. Because that's that's the purpose if you're going into business with your family to to help your family to support your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing is that no matter what we do and how how upset we are between among each other for some reason, we always talk. And uh, I will say, if you're gonna do this, you have to be very you have to be humble, because of course you don't have all the answers and. And like Antonio and I, we are very different. I would do something, and Antonio would do exactly ex this different, uh, the op uh, opposite. opposite. Uh, but sometimes, I mean, I know he's right, and I have to accept that. And also being very, I mean, communication is like in, in any relationship, but you have to be even more. Mm -hmm. Because uh, do you assume things because you have been knowing this person forever, and you assume things. No, you have to be very open and also forgive and accept. I mean, forgive the little things because if some of my employees do something to me, I don't care because he's not, no, it's not I don't care, but it's not as close as Antonio does it to me. Mm -hmm. And we have to be forgive, forgive and accept and, and just like Antonio said, have your vision that way you can go, continue going forward. That's great. So you guys just completed the Small Business Management 3 program that was sponsored by the Portland Business Alliance. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your experience in the program and anything that you gained um, from the program. Um, going, if, if you don't have um, a degree in business, 
pretty much you need to learn everything about how to run a business. And for most entrepreneurs out there, um, we go in, in, and do that. We go into doing business without really knowing how to run a business. So this program has been great for, for us, in, in my own opinion, because it has taught us a lot about administration and, and business connections and even marketing. I mean, it has taught us a lot of things. I'm, I'm really grateful for this opportunity and, and for all the, per, the people that participated teaching and also uh, sitting with us, mm. uh, sharing their experiences and, and, and everything they learned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say definitely, you know, the program, it is great for, for a small business because it opened your eyes to a new possibilities. The first couple of classes, you are like kind of a little depressed because you see everything you're doing wrong. <laughs> You say, oh my God, I'm doing all these wrong, all these things wrong. But but also helps you because it gives you direction to change things and to implement the strategies that will uh, help your business to succeed. Um, definitely, it gives me a new vision of the of my business, and also it helps me to see um, things that otherwise. I will never find out, or I will find out maybe in, in years and years, because they, I have access to resources and information and data and experts that otherwise I will never have the opportunity to, to access. Mm -hmm. And it definitely changed your mind and put you in another model to see like different path. Definitely, it, it gives you a path for, for success. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, in general, um, what, what advice would you give to people who are just starting a business? Uh, whether that's, you know, sales can be kind of challenging when you're first getting started or just trying to develop your culture. Um, what advice do you have to start up business owners? Uh, uh, well, um, I'm going to say that um, you're... Clients have to trust you in order to buy from you, so you have to create a relationship mm -hmm. with the people that you want to do business with and keep that relationship mm -hmm. strong, those relationships strong, because um, they are the ones that are going to help you um, talk about your business and, and tell the people about what you do and all that stuff. So that's a, for me, that's one key point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing, well, definitely, I will say, be very persistent and also realistic because sometimes, you, don't, you know, you say, oh, I'm going to have this and I'm going to have, this is my goal for sales and things, but you have to be aware of the situation and you have to learn what's going on around the area, or like Antonio said, really you have to see what things are right now on trend or what things are people needing. Because bottom line, a business is always a solution for a problem and an answer to questions. And, and when you have a passion to do something, okay, this is my passion, and how I apply this and offer something people there are in need. Mm -hmm. That way when I present what I have, people will see it as a benefit. And it's really, you know, having a business, I see that it's really knowing what what you have and how you can transform that or how you can put together that in order to to supply a need outside and being persistent and, and also another thing is is being very very clear with all your accounts and your spending and your income and keeping track of every single little thing because Sometimes they're amazing business, but people are not very good and, and tracking their expenses or, or their income, and they oversee that, and that can kill a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, one, another point is they need to um, really market mm -hmm. their business, because not just by having a business or opening your doors, people are going to want to know more about you or want to start 
buying from you. You need to go out there and, and, and do marketing in different ways, not just not just relationship with people, but you have to have a website, you have to um, go to events, you have to, I don't know, do different things depending on your business, but without marketing, nobody's gonna know about your business. Mm -hmm. And one thing that uh, we were talking before, being having a niche, is not true anymore that you can do an advertising for everybody and everybody's gonna want what you have. You have to be very selective of the group you want to reach because things have become so um, specific and like right now is some trying to be cultural responsive because there is a lot of groups that minorities communities of color that need different things but Antonio said you can have the best product but if you don't know how to talk to them mm -hmm. or how to send a message or what or how to to communicate and establish the relationship or that connection is not going to help you yeah, that brings me right into my last question, actually, is as a marketing agency, what are some of the new trends that you're seeing coming on board in 2015 and beyond that small businesses should be aware of? Well, definitely it surprised me to find out that there are a lot of uh, businesses that they don't have websites. Mm -hmm. And not having a presence in the web is, is just a no-no now and from, from now and, and into the future. And there are a lot of trends about uh, search engine optimization and all that stuff. And it really takes a lot of your time trying to keep up with, with all those trends, but it pays off too. So I encourage people to, to create a website and learn a little about, about the new trends on how to optimize your business. Um, there's a lot of help in the internet how to do it. You just need to, to put your, your time and your effort into doing it. And also social media. Social media is, is uh, here to stay. We, we have social media for a few years now, but uh, it, it keeps changing. And, and there are new trends that you need to be aware of and, and start working on it. And as they say, just focus on one or two, on two uh, social media venues that you think are the best for your business and, and go with those. Don't try to, to have a presence in in all 10, 20, 100 that are out there because it's possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say also to uh, go into the social media and the presence of internet. Right now, is the internet is uh, the possibilities and you have to be mobile. Your website has to be mobile. Everything you put out there has to be, uh, people have, can, you need to make sure people can access but they're, um, their phones because otherwise it will be complicated and it will, people will get upset that they cannot do it. Another thing I will say is, you know, there's a lot of strengths, it's not chops, vines. Um, I mean, as a marketing agency, we know what color is going to be. The new color for 2015 is something like the object stories color, like red and brown. That's the trend for 2015. And knowing this kind of stuff, you can do and plan promotions for it and people will be uh, going more into what you have to say. Uh, also, I will say that one thing I see besides infographics, uh, you know, things when people used to say a lot of things in, in text, there's no longer. This have to do with the use of photographs, videos, uh, uh, graphics. And another thing also will be uh, people are more community. The community is very important. And it's not just selling, you have to do more about community purpose, community engagement, and choose, we know that, but choose something and then be uh, a hero for that cause. Mm -hmm. That people start look, really looking into brands and companies that are really committed and, and good things and, and helping the city where they live or the community they live. Great. Thank you so much for taking your time. Great advice. I look forward to seeing more great things coming from you guys, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stay tuned. Thank, Thank you. you.